Hello everyone. Um, today we are going to uh, do the demonstration of how to install our extension Google Tag Manager. And we have our admin open here, logged in as an admin. Uh, you need to download the files, uh, purchase after the extension and unzip them to a folder that's easy to remember. And let's go to the installation now. Uh, we go to extension installer, mm, upload, uh, the files are here. As you can see, Google tag manager OC mod file. You have to locate that file from the zip, unzip files you did. And we installed it here. Installation complete. Uh, let's go to the second step, modification. We refresh the modification cache here. Mm, the third step would be going to the dashboard and clearing caches for the template and assets. Okay, so the first install, st install step is complete now. So we go to extension and see if we have the extension installed there. Okay, yeah. In the analytics section, you will see a new entry, tag manager. Okay, we hit the install here. Okay, so now you see the two new uh, tabs. Well, if you have a single uh, store, you will see only one. If you are running multiple stores, you will see multiple entries. Each one can be configured individually. Okay, so let's see what's inside. For the default store, we go. Okay, here's the extension configuration page we have, you can see. Google Marketing, Facebook Pixel. Okay, let's do it one by one. <clears throat> so first up, we need a Tag Manager container. Uh, so we have a container ready. You can see the other video for how to do that. Okay, here is this. And now we will put the analytic tracking ID. These two uh, fields are required to extension to actually start and work. And we enable the extension here. Okay, so let's see what other things do. Uh, this is after you have fully tested your extension and you are satisfied that it's working and tracking properly. So you can in enable this thing to exclude your visit. Like if you're logged into the admin and you browse your site, it shouldn't track you as a, as a visitor. So you can enable this to disable the tracking course. Analytical user ID tracking. Um, most of you guys are aware of uh, the user ID tracking in analytics. Um, you should read the details on Google Analytics before enabling this. And Third option is for cache. Uh, the tag manager uh, query uh, for product categories and brands where they where it can not find from by the default open card system. So good idea is you enable the cache. Uh, title modifier, like if you are if you have very long names of the product, you can actually reduce them to a small minimum amount and then in Google Analytics, when you're browsing to the product, you can actually identify them much easier. So it depends uh, what your preference is. Product identifier uh, is for the feed file to, more, to match to the uh, your Google Shopping, uh, Google Merchant Center account shopping feed. So if you're using product ID, you, can, you should select product ID. This is going to be uh, used for dynamic remarketing or, and matching the IDs both in Google Ads and Facebook Pixel. So you should select carefully. Normally people use product ID or you can use product ID plus con concurrency or model product ID, whatever uh, you are using there. We're going to add uh, EN numbers soon, later. Okay. Uh, pay attention to this section. This is uh, by default filled up for you and we recommend not to change it. Uh, 
but you can add new entries. Like if you have an uh, a payment module that that have its own routine of sending checkout, or you are using a third party checkout that's not listed and is not working, you can actually add that route here. Like we have added quick checkout slash checkout, or one page checkout slash checkout. So if you add the route here, uh, the tags are going to fire on that page. And same is for the success page. If you are, uh, if your extension is going to like most of the payment system they have a special page where the transaction is complete and you want to trigger that on that page uh, you can add that success page or if you have a custom success page you can add that route as well so the two routes normally um, this will work for gen general user users but some extensions require uh, you to like have a custom routes filled in here Otherwise, your checkout step or success uh, step will be missed out. So if you're missing these uh, steps, uh, you should uh, use this section to fill in and uh, tell the extension that this is a final checkout success page. Sure. Okay, the next section is Google Marketing section. There are two options here, Google Ads Conversion Tracking and Google Optimize. So this is a simple Google conversion ID. You can you need to add two things. The ID it's provided by Google. Uh, that would be a numbers only. Uh, you you can't put that A W sign here. So you, just the numbers and the label. It is provided for the conversion you are using. Uh, you have to fill both these fields to work it properly. Uh, dynamic rem remarketing we recommend if you're using Google Ads, you should enable that uh, even if you don't use remarketing you should enable that so there are two uh, options first to enable the remarketing and second to enable the custom parameters um, these are the old parameters used by Google Ads, but uh, still supported so uh, you can actually select these three or if you want the other ones as well depending on your requirement, you can select all these ones. If you're using Optimize, you can enable that and provide the Optimize container ID and the container ID will fire the Optimize tags. We don't have anyone, anything right now, so we, we will just disable it right now. Facebook pixel, pixel tracking is simple. You have to provide the pixel ID. Uh, let's say we just put a dummy ID here, something, and catalog ID. Um, if your pixel is not connected with a Facebook catalog, a product feed on Facebook, uh, then you have to provide a catalog ID for dynamic ads to work. Otherwise, when you send the data to Facebook pixel with product details or product IDs, it is not, it will not recognize and show you an, uh, an alert, not an error, but an alert. So uh, it's recommended to have a Facebook pixel feed. Uh, and provide the catalog ID here. Uh, the alternate currency is for those uh, currencies that are not supported by Facebook Pixel directly. There, there are currencies in Europe and Russia and other parts of the world that's not supported. Like if you provide the feed, uh, provide the events with that currency, you will get an error. So you can select the alternate currency. You should have that currency installed on the open card system and you can use it to send the data with that currency converted. So this is a nice option if you're having issues with currency. So we select a US dollar for the moment right now. The other analytics option, you can use hot charts, course, and you just have to provide the IDs being tracking. And the add-on section, you can use Zen chat or the chat script will be activated cookie consent is a simple cookie it don't it is not the gdpr one so don't bother about gdpr uh, in here it's just a cookie notice message amp container if you, if you are if you have a web call, uh, amp extension you can use the amp container here to file standard tags on the amp okay the last one we will go on later let's save this thing And let's go to the store we installed it. Mm, here we are. So it's loading up and we can see, uh, okay, sorry, we have to load it here. 
So uh, let's go in here. Okay, so it's loading up now and it should be on the screen just.